happy is Andy Vedius Day, and we're about to get into the second Assassin match of today. Are you excited for this one, Vedius? I'm very excited, and I too, Mithy, want to see some talent. I can't wait. Hopefully, get some more parkour on the rift. But let's take a closer look. A closer look, sorry, at our All Stars taking to the rift in the blue corner, representing Team Ice Latin America South. Up in the top lane, it's going to be Helio from Furious Gaming in the jungle. Kletos will be from Isaris Gaming. Pluger in the mid lane for Chaos Latin Gamers and the AD carry Warren the godlike Vayne we're playing as the Eddie carrying the sport for him will be Bear from Chaos Lights and Gamers as well. Meanwhile on the other side of the rift representing Team Fire from Japan they have top laner Evie from 7th Heaven. In the jungle is Tussle from Rampage the man that actually won them their one versus one last night. Their mid laner Seros from Detonation Focus Me. On Eddie carry is Haretti uh, from Unsold Stuff Gaming and their support Dara also from Rampage. And these two teams currently undefeated at the moment in the international wildcard All-Stars. Japan actually sitting on top of their group after their 1v1 uh, victory last night. They took it to all five games, and we actually saw an assassin then, Vedius. Yes, we did. Uh, we actually saw Rengar coming out in the one versus one. Oddie actually brought that one out. Uh, we saw a Trundle, which I wasn't so bad <laughs> off. Um, but yeah, it was very fun. A lot of cool stuff came out. But I'm hoping that, like, I think if anyone's going to bring out the crazy stuff, it'll actually be Tussle. I feel like that he will be the type of player that'll be like, you know what? I feel like playing jungle <laughs> talent, you know? <laughs> like, think of the jungle clear speed. Like, it would be so good. I'm just parkouring your way through the jungle, being like, oh, I'm going to clear this, jump over the wall, going to clear this, like efficiency. Well, you were telling me the other day that Tuzzle's been able to 1v9 before, so surely one on five as an assassin shouldn't be that hard. Well, I mean, it depends if you get gold, and it depends if you have a repeat of Carbon's performance <laughs> where you go mid and give double buff a level four. I mean, uh, that's typically not how you want to start off your game, uh, but we'll have to wait and see. I mean, we, we we do have a list of champions that are allowed. Like, some things that we didn't see was Master Yi. We didn't see any of that. Didn't see any in Italy. Saw no Nocturne. Now, Fish, you might not know this, but actually, in the UK, I am, I'm, I'm a bit of a well-known Nocturne mid player. Right? Huh. Believe I just it or thought not. you played Katarina and that's it. No, actually, because uh, for a long time, because <laughs> for a long time, Katarina kind of sucked mid. Um, but Nocturne mid actually used to be one of my specialties after I saw Korean do it. Now I'd love to see, <laughs> I'd love to see some Nocturne mid lane. But I'm, I don't know if they even know about the legendary Nocturne mid. We'll have to wait and see. Is uh, remember, ladies and gentlemen, no bands, all blind pick. Yep. Neither team knows what's going on. Um, and earlier in the day, Oceania. Definitely had a game plan coming in. Um, Turkey seemed to be more of go with the flow style. You know, they just sort of picked what they felt like. Uh, and it looks like for the time being, there's nothing set in stone other than the LeBlanc mid. Well, look at this. So far, Team Ice is going almost according to Mithy's OP tier list here. Yeah. They've got the Rengar in the jungle locked in as well as the LeBlanc mid lane finally. So Mithy will be able to get, uh, get a look at that one. And we are going to see Akali up in the top lane for Team Ice. And it seems like Pantheon and Katarina wow. will be their bottom lane. This is literally Mithy's team aside from the Akali in the top lane. And I would argue that Akali is actually a slightly stronger duelist in terms of the 1v1 when you compare it up to Talon, largely because of the changes to invisibility. So now a pink ward or control ward cannot spot her out anymore. So she has a lot more safety up in the top lane. She's been given added damage to her passive. And she has a little bit more wave color and sustain with the rest of her kit. So she's quite the powerful duelist. Meanwhile, on the other side, once again, we're seeing another support LeBlanc paired up with the Aries. This yep. seems to be a common thing, perhaps, that the teams identified in their scrims last night. Uh, another Diana coming out in the mid lane into the LeBlanc. You heard them talk about it on the analyst desk, how the Diana is typically considered fairly strong in that matchup. Uh, but we're also going to get the rivalry, Kazix versus Rengar up in the jungle. Ooh. It's certainly going to be exciting to watch. And it's going to be fun to watch. I mean, just look at all the smiles in the players' faces here, Vedius. You know, normally when we watch them play competitive matches, they're all serious, they're all ready to go, they want victory here, but everyone just looks like they're having a hell of a fun time here on Summer. Well, I mean, we are too. You know? exactly. uh, that's, that's the best thing about the international wildcard. All-stars is you get to see a bunch of fun stuff. You get to see a lot of Katarina. I mean, this is the second game now. I'm really happy that we're seeing all these diverse team compositions. <laughs> it's always nice to see something interesting. So am I, but don't forget to vote for your favorite teams here at LOL Esports on Twitter. Use the hashtag LASWIN or the hashtag JPNWIN and vote for your favorite team. But enough of that, we're getting back on the Summoner's Rift for the second Assassin mode match of today. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. In terms of team compositions, remember, you want to build damage and kill your opponents. That's the typical <laughs> play style of the Assassin comp. 
Um, for man team mode I only. Yeah, man mode only. Uh, <laughs> level one, though, looks like Team Ice definitely have some strategy up their sleeve. Are they just going to do the solo queue where you literally oh. run through the river? Looks like they're going to try and do spotted. just that. Bear has actually taken stun at level one. He flashes forward. He's on top of Dara. The chains are not going to connect because he's going to be able to mimic his way out. Two flashes already. <laughs> Saros is going to have to get the heck out of there as well. Oh, my goodness. Latin America South, they were out for blood there. I feel like there should have been a little bit of better communication coming out from LES because there was only one flash from Bear. He just committed. He knew that he was spotted. He didn't care. He just went for it. And Pluga should have immediately followed him with the chains. Yep. But it wasn't there in time. Dara was able to spec his distortion, get out to safety, didn't lose any summoner spells. Uh, and speaking of summoner spells, it actually looks like the Seras is going to go a little bit more defensive, decided to go for the teleport. My opinion, it's the coward's way out, but there we are. That's just my <laughs> opinion, all right? I feel like it's all or nothing in this game mode. So you what? No flashes allowed either? Just exhausting oh, night. Go the in dream, there. dream fish. The dream. That's what I would love to see. Restricted summoner spells, restricted champions, and restricted items. That's like a what Welsh wants out. here. You know no I mean? flashing. But it's only about getting exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> Getting exhausted and setting things on fire. Typical oh. night out in Wales. Oh, goodness. Well, I'm pretty sure you're still happy with the Katarina pickup here. At least there's one in each game you're casting here today. Yeah, I mean, we can start by talking about the bottom lane because when you look at the Katarina Pantheon, this is something that Mithy was talking about on the desk, yep. where you have the CC setup from the Pantheon. This actually buys time for you to set up the daggers the way in which you want. So then you can go aggressive, you can get the resets, and then you can jump out to safety. So it's quite a good combo. The big problem they're going to have is the range disadvantage versus the Ari and the LeBlanc. It looks like they're actually going to run double AP or at least start that way, so they have a lot more wave clear available to them. And this could be a bit of a tricky situation when you're going up against double melee. Oh, Sarah taking the win. I hope Storm Raider Surge instead of the Thunderlord. So 19 Thunderlords have been picked up so far in Assassin's mode. Saras is not rating very highly on the man scale right now. Kratos. But I'll tell you who is this. Kratos looking for a gank in the mid. He's level three, looking to try and get down into the bot lane. Horati and Dara in a lot of trouble here. Teleport actually coming down. There's the chump. Bears jumping in. Kratos being exhausted. And here comes Evi. Gonna be able to pick up first blood onto Kratos there. LJL turn around the gank. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're watching. This is how you counter the level three gank. You run the Pantheon top. You go for the early teleport and you get the counter gank. It was a big boon for Team Ice that both Warren and Bear were only level one, so they couldn't contribute to the gank. Have a look at this. They're fought underneath their turret. They've already been chunked out. Kratos is effectively in a one versus three, and they have exhaust ignite with the Ari and the LeBlanc. So it was just honestly not a very well-timed gank. They should have waited for the level two mark before trying to force that. But First Blood going to go over to the side of Japan. Even Seros there propping his teleport to try and get get in for the action. But Tussle moving up in towards that top lane. Helios in a lot of trouble. He's gone invisible. Trying to duke it out and dodge away from Evie. But the flash forward comes out from the Pantheon. Helios going to try and take him one on one here. Tussle is just running around in circles. Trying to see if he can get back into it. Flashes forward. Helios being able to flash away here. Let's see if he can get out. The Shroud's coming up in one second. Helios, oh. can he do it? Not just quite. 0.5 seconds left for him to get back into the safety. So close for Helior to get the invisibility and get out. If he just bought half a second, he could have very well been able to get out of that one. But unfortunately for him, it wasn't enough. I feel like he honestly should have just committed onto Evie. He was level four, Evie was level two. And even though he blocked the actual, uh, the second proc of the Q, I feel like he could have been able to turn that around. Nevertheless, he still has a big farm advantage. He still has the item advantage. But take a look at this. He's pushing up very aggressively. He doesn't have the vision to predict for the Kha'Zix. But this is the changes that you're seeing right now. Invisibility. No longer can you get spotted out by any pesky wards. And typically, you'd actually see Evie actually take a huge chunk of damage. But thanks to the block, he actually mitigates a lot of that. Very good flash here from Helior. And it's a shame that we can't actually see the cooldown on his W because it was literally just there about to come up. But then the CC from Evie and Tussle combined was enough to get the kill. But LJL now 2-0 up against Latin America South. Froskerin was saying that they had a couple of sneaky plans coming into the international wildcard All-Stars. And they've shown a few of them so far. Let's see if they can continue to do more here. There's already Heretti and Dara pushing up the bottom lane. The LeBlanc as well as the Ari combo in the bottom lane. No AD on this Ari this time around, going for ability power instead. Well, because last game was so action-packed so early on, uh, we didn't really get a chance to talk much about the LeBlanc changes. So now, 
There is a little bit of a delay on your return with the distortion. So when you jump in, you have to wait, I believe it's 0.25 seconds before you can actually return to your original spot. Yep. But also you can see this little active around the targets that you hit with the spells. That now can be changed with another CC, uh, another ability to do bonus damage. And uh, that's really where a lot of her wave clear from. So Tussle now moving to the mid. I don't think you should go for this gang. I was looking for it. Pluger's going to get quite a bit of damage down here on towards Tussle. Ignite actually being popped as well. Pluger, he's a little bit angry that there's a Karstix in his lane. This is my lane. He's sending a message. Pluger now just hitting level 6. And this is really the big point for LeBlanc now because the big change to her ultimate is that she actually makes a mimic of herself. Uh, but we might not have time for that as the bottom lane. Dara in a little bit of trouble. They're going to get stunned up. There goes Warren trying to jump in. Ignite is ticky. He should go down here as Warren gets the return kill. So they end up trading one for one down in the bottom lane. Warren playing hyper aggressive. He would have gotten the reset if he was able to pick up his dagger, but Dara is able to flash away in time. Is now Helio going aggressive on Evi. Evi taking a lot of damage here. Helio trying to dash in. He's going for the dive. The Aegis has come back up for Pantheon. Looking to see if he can duke it out with Helio there, but gets incredibly low. The only reason why Helio decided not to commit to that was because of the passive block that Evie had managed to pick up for himself. But let's backtrack to the bottom lane. Dara plays aggressively, and this is where you see the change to the W. The 0.25 enables you to actually respond with the hard CC, and you can see if Warren was able to pick up that dagger just a little bit faster, he could have gotten a reset. Doubt he would have been able to get out regardless, but still, one for one on the bottom lane. Not bad considering how hard they've been pushed back early on. But it's still dead even between LAS and LJL here. Both teams have about 10,000 gold, about 300 extra in LJS favor. As Tussle now going to donate blue buff on over towards Seros, like a good jungler. Uh, very kind of them. Uh, in this game mode, I would never give my mid lane a blue buff, uh, because that would make it harder for me to kill things. So. Uh, I mean, it's all about killing stuff in this game mode, remember? And right now, Japan are winning in the killing game mode. <laughs> <laughs> but we do see Tussle moving around to the top half of the map. Uh, in terms of the farm differential, Rengar actually does have the advantage. He is now level 6. The changes to his ultimate means that his invisibility lasts way longer. Uh, but he can now only see one target, which is one of the big differences. Now, Chain lands on Aceros. Yeah, Aceros taking quite a bit of damage there. Pluto gets a good spell rotation now. But the Negatron Cloak that Diana was able to pick up previously, mitigating a lot of the damage dealt there. This Tussle will continue farming up the Krugs. They will just uh, keep splitting here. And now Kletos, looking like he wants to get in towards the bottom lane. Instead, we'll recall just behind the turret. So a much uh, more passive early game compared mm -hmm. to game one. We're having a much <laughs> more chilled out time. Uh, we're just relaxing, chilling, which is fine. You know, there's no problem with that. It looks like the Plugo actually may be looking for a roam up top. Tussle moving in for a bit of a cheeky sneak play in the top lane. Oh. Uh, I do feel like Evi needs it just a little bit because in terms of the dueling powers, Helio goes aggressive. Helio going very aggressive. He jumps up to Heavy, finds Tussle. He's going to get melted here. He has next to no health. Plugo is going to try and run up. He's jumping in, trying to get the distortion down. Tussle chasing up towards Helio. Here comes Kratos as well. The Red Guard's up here looking for the kill on towards Karsex. Plugo gets oh the no. kill onto a minion. What are you doing, Plugo? Messes up the kill there. And Fire pick up one kill for themselves. Meanwhile, double kill for Rowan somewhere else on the map. But that doesn't matter because fire they're gonna kill up in the top lane now action is really starting to kick off but i don't know if the action's done just yet going back here blue has been locked out every stunned underneath the turret kletos picks up the first kill now seros with his only negatron cloak is trying to run away from an ad damage dealing ranga trying to kite away from kletos plugo looks like he wants to come back here he puts a ward over the wall jumps on top with the plastic coat the flash forward for kletos but he goes into tussle the outplay from team fire tussle takes up the chains as well sacrificing himself for seros as helio comes back down Dana goes back in gets the double kill my goodness, Team Fire, they're playing out of their minds. And the action just keeps on going. Tussle's got as well. Thunderlord's proc for Bear. He's going to pick up a kill as well. It's now 6-6 six, six between LAS and LJL. My word. So now we have to backtrack to what even happened down in the bottom lane. This is the true power of Pantheana. I guess that's the name of the combo now. Stunned up to Dara. Level 6 cat into the recess. That was so well played, actually. Oh man, that was actually very good, but uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Focusing more on what happened in the top side. This is after the initial trade where they get the turnaround onto the Akali. They go for the dive. 
gets rooted up by the Rengar so that he ends up eating all those tower shots. Seros is forced to go on the retreat. And this is where Blugo gets a little bit greedy. He thinks that he can go for the chase. He wants to pick himself up the kill. Kletos is expecting the plant, so he flashes preemptively. Doesn't expect Tussle there waiting for him. Ends up paying for it with his life. And then Seros, he's actually stuck between a rock and a hard place right now because Blugo knows that Helior is coming in from the flank. So Seros then just has to make the decision. Thanks to the ward. I'm going to turn this around. I'm going to get the kill. And I believe that was uh, something like a three for four in favor of the LAS. Big team fight coming up from LAS. They tie up the scoreboard. The gold is still tied up between these two teams. Up in the top lane, though, Helio looking for Evi. Here comes Clayton Swall. They lock down the Pantheon. He's going to try and grab this guy away. The man Pantheon. He's going to be able to get out. Helio can't chase him down. And now Tussle's up in the top lane as well. He is out for blood. Looking to chase out Helio. Xeros is coming on as well. Clayton is going invisible, trying to run away. He's camouflaged. Running between the turret. Evi oh. just bangles over him. Clayton can't quite get him. It's a double kill picked up by Saros. Evie with the outplay. That was fantastic. Incredible stuff coming from the top laner. And now a Panther in the bottom lane. Saros going to get stunned up. Plugo tries to chase it down. Hereni is coming up to try and save him. He throws out one more spear. Goes over the wall. Bear gets a kill towards Dara. Hereni trying to dash around. The walls are Pantheon's friends. And they attack Hereni relentlessly. Try to help him out. The Heartseeker strikes coming out. One last auto attacks it up. And Hereni gets the kill. And the two versus one now. War Warren. He's been stunned up. Shutdown comes out from Evie as they take him down. A little bit greedy there from the Katarina. So LJL have all of a sudden gotten themselves four kills on the board. That was insane from all the Pantheons around the map. This is nothing like game one. Two, one, and three for Bear. Two, one, and four for Evie. My word, what an insane series of events. And look at this. Evi ends up falling for the same trap that he set up earlier on. He uses the Hextech thingamabob to get that magic shield. He ends up jumping out with the ultimate. And Helio, he's already used all of his dashes to try and go for the kill. But Kleidos thinks, OK, I'll trade my top laner for their top laner. But he waits a little bit too long. And this is where Seros joins the fight. He gets the initial kill. Fantastic response from Evi. He reads. Kletos like a book. He knows he's going to go for the kill. He has the leap stun ready. He gets it. Now Bear, he moves into the enemy jungle aggressively. Level 8 to level 6. Gets the stun. He has the base stats to just shred through him, and he gets a kill in a 2 versus 1. Meanwhile, Kletos being jumped on here. Tussle pops his ultimate, goes invisible. The chains are locking him down. He's going to fall. Tussle gets a kill. Bear has to run away there, but there are still a couple of members, members from LAS trying to collapse here. Plugo waiting in the wings, gets the stand down towards Xeros, but he jumps back in, tries to pull it back. Tussle goes over the wall. Here comes Tara, misses the chains. He'll mimic back to safety there, but LJL, they're not going down without a fight. So Kleidos ended, ends up getting caught out of position. Doesn't quite respect the damage coming out from Tussle, who is now level 9. Now Evi looking for another 1 versus 1, level 10 to level 8. All these exchanges that have been happening in the top lane have massively turned things in his favor. Ooh, that's a lot of damage coming out from Evi there. One spell rotation. Chunks out Helio to half his health. Meanwhile, Warren split pushing down in the bottom lane up against the Ari. Mm -hmm. And a couple of items have been completed. So have a look at this. Zonya's now finished first for Heredi. I hate that build. Awful. <laughs> Truly <laughs> terrible. Don't understand why you do it. You either want to go for an early Morello or you want to just get the Abyssal in there. It makes way more sense up against the cat who's now looking for blood. Warren pops down the Hexet Gunblade, avoids the charm coming out from Heredi. He would have gone for that if Dara didn't show up. 100% he would have gone for that. Typically, you want to start with the Shinpo, then you W, then you Q, because by the time you've closed the gap, you then get the reset uh, on the Shinpo after already dealing the damage. Then you can jump to your next dagger, get another spin off. Uh, but he decided not to commit for any of that. Meanwhile, Blugo in the mid. Being very aggressive here towards Seras, locks him down with the change, mimics back to safety and away from Diana. He's picked up an Abyssal Scepter for himself, so going to be able to mitigate a lot of the magic damage that LeBlanc deals. It certainly makes sense against the LeBlanc. This is considered why Seros uh, or Diana is a pretty good pick into the LeBlanc. Meanwhile, have a look at this Evi coming in the mid. Here comes the Grand Sky for Blugo going to try and jump away. He mimics, but flashes into a wall. He's now going back into the mid lane. Here comes Dara, though. He tries to trick his way out, but it's not enough. There's four members of Team Fire in the mid lane as Tussle. He's looking for Helio. Jumps on top of him. Gets a lot of damage out. Helio stands his ground, pops the Shroud, and is trying to run away. That ward's not going to help you, but the flash will 
Paul Tassel as he gets a hit, kill onto Helion. I love the fact that Tassel put a ward down there thinking, why isn't this working? But nevertheless, he still gets the kill now. Bear being the aggressor. Oh, you are a man, Bear! No, why did you get this? He goes in. Silence goes Kratos. He's jumping in as well. That's one kill for Team Ice, but they lose their Pantheon for their troubles. Bear, it doesn't matter whether you got a kill or didn't. You have earned my respect for being the manliest Bear around. What a play that was. One versus four. Does not care, and they get a kill. I call worth fish. Yeah, the halls of Valhalla are going to welcome Bear there, because that was absolutely amazing. Manly died in combat. Team Ice are now going to take this time to try and take a dragon for themselves. They're about 4,000 gold behind the LGL squad at the moment. I mean, in terms of the gold, definitely the Japanese team are in control. But I mean, it, the LAS have done a good job of putting up a fight. I feel like the bottom half of the map has definitely gone in their favor. They've gotten a lot of 1v1, 2v2 kills down there, but Tussle is just doing so much work around the map. Helio tries to use the Shroud to jump away from Tussle, successfully avoids the Kha'Zix. A mid lane, no mid lane, out of turret to left available. Sarah's gonna get jumped on by Plugo. He's trying to jump away. Warren's coming in as well, takes a move, strikes in the face. As Fire work together to take down Plugo. Warren now jumping on top of Sarah's, but it's not enough. Sarah's deletes him before he can spin around even once. Unfortunately for Warren, he realized far too late that this was not a fight he could win. Ends up getting caught out now, Bear. He's in trouble, gets stunned by the chain, stunned by Evie, and Sarah's goes on a rampage as he gets another kill. Diana proving to be one of the stronger assassins in this game mode right now. All four members of Team Fire are pushing down the mid with her ready down in the bottom lane saying, guys, I still got to get farm. I'm playing for late game, okay? That's why I've gone for an early Zonyas. I, I... Followed by a Negatron cloak. Why? This isn't a man build. This is a, I'm going to play safe like an AD carry. No, Heretti, no. Death cap. Get it now. <laughs> Promote yourself to a wizard professional and wizard yourself all over the enemy team. Well, for now, he's a knight, Vedius. He's got a lot of armor and magic resistance. He does not want to take any damage on the rift. As you see the rest of Team Fire able to chunk away at this bottom lane out of turret. Kletos actually popping his ultimate, trying to hunt somebody down. That's going to last for quite some time, but can't quite find anyone just yet. fee fi fo fun. Whoops. I misclicked my number. Um, Number R. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, right now, Team Ice looking to try and contest the blue buff. But Tussle, he wants to Oh, he's going in. He's a man right Whoa. now, but he pays for it with his life. As Dara's the next target, Warwick gets the reset. He's going to be able to pick up a kill. Horedi dashes over the wall and gets back to safety. Seros is trying to walk away with him as Kletos takes his time to farm, farm up Team Fire's jungle. All right, Tussle, all right. I respect that, too. Diving into four members. Pretty confident, but you don't get the same sort of isolation damage as you would previously. So have a look at this. He just goes just head first. He feels like he has the support from Dara and Heredi. What he doesn't realize is Heredi does no damage. He tries to go onto Plugo and does absolutely nothing. Plugo, on the other hand, is stacked full of damage, gets the distortion, gets the mimic distortion on top of that as well. And they're able to chase down Dara thanks to the resets from Warren. So, excuse me, just a bad decision from Tussle to go in for that exchange. Um, but maybe if already had some damage, all I'm saying, my friend, all I'm saying. Well, you're not going to like this very much, Fedius, but there are three Sonya Hourglasses uh, inside of Team Fire. I mean, what would you want, right? If you wanted to be remembered in history as yep. someone in assassin mode, do you want to be the guy that became, had a good figure and turned golden? Or do you want to be the fully fledged wizard? I don't Do know. you want to be? I'd like to be an assassin. Which one's an assassin? One the seems one like with a the wizard's wizard. hat. <laughs> well, meanwhile, Helio, he's not too much of a wizard. He is. He's going to get chunked out. Tussle picks up that kill. And they go straight back towards taking another Rift Herald. Well, I mean, that's the first step to becoming a wizard, making your opponents disappear. Uh, they are going to pick up that Rift Herald. Going to be handed over to Evie. I mean, at this point, I mean, do you want to split push? No, you want to group up and fight. Uh, so maybe it's helpful. We'll have to see as the game progresses. In fact, Saros now being moved into the split push position. Level 13 has decided to go for a very traditional build path with the Diana. Uh, the Abyssal makes a lot of sense going into the um, uh, LeBlanc. And the Zonius, I suppose, also makes sense. But Kledos, he wants some action. Yeah, he's popped his ultimate, looking to try and jump on some, someone from Team Fire. Teleport actually coming out from Helio to try and group up the rest of the team. The camouflage does get spotted. He's hunting on towards Dara. Can spot the LeBlanc at the moment. 
As he just dashes over the wall, gets back to safety. So Kalatos again just can't quite find anyone with his ultimate. Look at how long he's invisible for Fish. <laughs> he literally baited both their charm and the chains, and he was still invisible long enough for both those abilities to come off cooldown. That is the change that has been made to Rengar. He's basically a Kali 2.0. <laughs> Tussle now looking to try and get a fight up in the top lane. Seras meanwhile fighting in the bottom lane. Tussle's gonna fall immediately. Warwick gets a nice ultimate along. Picks up two daggers. Heredis now jumping over the wall. Puts the exhaust down onto the Katarina. He's gonna fall next. Evi, he's gonna not gonna be able to get out alive because Bear gets a kill. Heredi flashes away from Plugo, but he can't quite take down Bear. Now Dara's joining LeBlanc, trying to help him out. Plugo gonna flash up on this. There's on his hourglass videos. He lives to fight another day. Well, respect to Heredi for getting the outplay right at the very and three kills go down. Saros! I don't think anything more needs to be said. Good job, sir. <laughs> he has to clean up the kills. He has to have the last word. Eight, one, and four on this Diana right now. Sure, maybe his farm isn't the greatest, but he makes four up for it in kills. We're gonna get a recap of exactly how that all came down. Tussle wanted to try and get the flank off, playing the squishy Kha'Zix. He feels like he has the support from Evi, doesn't respect the damage coming out from Warren, which is a surprising amount. Heredi does come from over the wall. That exhaust is so valuable in keeping Evi alive. But fair play to Bear, he does a great job of being able to just pick up a return kill. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, Seros just proving why Diana is apparently broken. And he teleports up towards the top lane. I'm helping. And then Dara just comes in for the cleanup. Yeah, then we see Saros, you know, just teleport to the top lane, flashes over the thick part of the wall, and just says, hello, bear. Here's a kill, there's a kill, everywhere's a kill, kill. I know <laughs> how to play this game mode. Uh, meanwhile in the mid. Oh, more action taking place here as Bear's already been able to pick up a kill on towards the opposing Pantheon. Both Pantheons down, Dara's the next one to fall. Kletos gets to jump through the brush, but he's going to be jumped on here. Good flash away to get back to safety. That's Fire and Ice fight over the Infernal Dragon. So, LJL are going to be picking up that Infernal Dragon, and if anything makes Assassins more deadly, it is to empower all of their attacks with a bit of elemental damage. Now Plugo lying in wait for a pick. He could very well find it onto Tussle. Sarah so is able to shove Plugo out of the brush. Tussle yet to be spotted, trying to get behind the team. Takes a cue from Little Blanc. Warren and Plugo now backing away to safety. 42,000 gold to 37,000 gold. Currently in favor of the LJL squad. So here, just backtracking to what happened in the river. Bear tries to carry out some vision. Evie does get spotted out. And then it's pretty much just Pantheon of Pantheon action. <laughs> we will trade our Spartan for your Spartan. Meanwhile, Dara then also gets caught on the back foot, Ooh. trying to play a little bit too aggressively. This is the difference between support, LeBlanc, and mid lane. LeBlanc, you do get a little bit more gold if you hang around the mid lane. Uh, but it does actually force Kratos back because he saw Seros coming in from the flank. He realized he couldn't deal with that crazy Mama Jamma and he was forced to back away. So they end up giving away the Infernal Drake. It's Kratos again moving in towards the top lane. He does have his ultimate available. Dara is going to get stunned up, use the Mimic there. Can try and dash away, but decides not to. Ultimate being used by Kratos, but decides not to go in. Watch him now be invisible for literally ever. Unless he jumps on towards Dara and said throws out the boulder strike. Does not connect and he removes the invisibility. So now we have returned to the neutral game. Both teams <laughs> waiting for an opportunity to strike. A lot of vision coming down. A little bit more than what game one, but they have found Saros. Trying to jump on top of him. Blue oh. goes though. Almost gets deleted by Saros. Saros jumps to the wall, gets a kill. Saros not done yet. He gets two on towards Salio. Helios not gonna try and run. Warren's next. Evie picks up the kill there with team fire. Tussles flashing and leaping on top of Helio. Will get the slow down. One Q is all it would take to get the kill, but he just can't quite get it through the Hux Tech Gunblade. LAS thought that they had found Seros, but it was Seros who had found them. He is not afraid to turn around these fights, and he is so strong. Cleanly picks himself up. Easy kills. This They're able to get the Baron. It's why I like Bear. He does <laughs> go in. Can't quite get the Baron. Or does he? No, he can't quite no. get the Baron there, but he tries anyway, Vedius. He does try, but have a look at the power of Seros right now. All four members try to come in for the collapse, and he just goes in for the one shot against Blugo. Even then, he he's sitting in a two versus one. He's still able to get the kill down onto Rengar. He would have got a kill onto Helio if his own minions hadn't betrayed him. And they end up getting three kills off the back of that. So, I mean, at this point, 
LAS really have no one that can kill Saras unless they can get to level 80. If that, Akali maybe gets to late game. If the cat, cat gets to late game, who knows? But, I mean, right now, Saras is just way too strong. Well, the LJL have a 10,000 gold lead over Latin America South. With that, Baron Buff are going to be able to slowly push in towards Team Ice's base. Heretti and Seros are grouping up towards the mid lane. They do have Evi close behind him on Pantheon. His Grand Sky Falls going to be back up shortly. Bear uh, decides he wants to use his Yomas Ghost Wave for a little bit, you know, run around a little bit. It's because he feels that it would be unfair to his opponents if he had the active available. <laughs> Therefore, he decided to use it. Oh, he is a real man, Vedia. So oh, let me go here today. Like, his he clothing, just doesn't care. Like, his clothing is entirely appropriate for his behavior He's this game. dropping on people with sandals, Vedia. He oh, doesn't care. Like, he went into a Baron Pit 5v1. He would have stolen it if he didn't lag, you know? <laughs> Kledos right now potentially looking for an opportunity. He's gone invisible, has found Tussle, but moving to see if he can get the rest of Team 5, who have backed off. They're allowing Saras to split push in the top lane at the moment. The rest of the four are still grouped up. Teleport is available for this diner if required, but he is chipping away at this turret rather quickly. And that's going to fall. Top lane in the turret falls down. Level 16, Diana. Someone has to go and deal with Saras right now. But I don't think anyone can. Like, he literally has a three-level advantage on the highest level from LAS. This is going to be a tough mountain to climb as the rest of Team Fire push down the bottom lane. Yeah, bottom lane in a turret now under siege. Four members of Team Fire. We're going to try to take this one down. But Bear, Bear. He's doing what Bear does best. Jumps in. He gets obliterated though to start things off. Warren gets a full channel on, but can't quite find anyone to get the damage down. Here comes Seros looking for the cleanup. Helios is first. Claims us off to the side. Warren's trying to run away. The auto attacks just hurt way too much. Saros is going to go in in just a second here as Warren is trying to run away. Gets the kill off, gets the kill. Kletos now trying to fight in one on one. But Saros says, Come at me, bro, because I'm ready for this one. And Kletos will fall. Team Fire get a clean four for zero. They have the Baron, they have the minions, and they are pushing into the base, maybe even looking for more kills. Lugo trying his best. Sarah tries to get the chains out. Saros, is he going to go in? Do it, Saros. He can't quite do Bear. it. But Bear is back. Let's see what he can do. He's going to get he obliterated, but he gets the shutdown on towards Saros. Tussle's going to jump out, and Baron buff minions are working on the Nexus turrets. Bear is my MVP regardless of who does well in this game because of how fantastically he is playing. Well, there goes Helio. He tries to jump in but gets shut down by Team Fire as soon as he gets anywhere close to the Japanese lineup. My word, I have to have mad respect for LAS because they are just playing so aggressively. <laughs> they don't care how far behind they are. They are just looking for fights. And again, Bear, the hero that Latin South America need to be the initiator. He doesn't care that he's only level 11. He just wants to go in, he starts to fight. The exhaust onto Warren was actually massive in mitigating so much of the damage. But at this point, Zeros joins the fight. He then starts to clean up. There is no one that can deal with him. And he just shreds through the lineup of team lines. He's just massive, Eddie Zeros. He is too hard to kill and does way too much damage. He even goes for the one-on-one -on -one against Kletos. If you guys watching the bottom left-hand corner of your screen there, you will see that the second Infernal Dragon of the game was picked up by the LGL squad during this time. So they now have two Infernal Dragons to work with to try and end this game. They're now 59,000 gold to 45,000 gold. And look at the damage dealt during that last team fight. Yeah, Bear did so much damage. Woo! Really impressive stuff. Out damage the Kha'Zix, out damage the LeBlanc. Fair play to Bear. Really impressive on this Pantheon. 5, 8, and 6. I mean, that's a pretty good scoreline for Pantheon. I mean, I know Bear was one of Atlas's favorite players because he had a really cool name. He's now one of my favorite players in this tournament, Bear, because I mean, he is a man. In Latin <laughs> South America, he was voted in just because of how popular he is with the fans. He is just such this lovable, cuddly guy that just plays <laughs> like a hero. I absolutely love it. Uh, so let's see what else he can bring out. Maybe he has a couple of tricks left for us. Well, now he's trying to run away with Kletos, who is currently invisible. That will run out. It's, it's not running away. He's luring them into a trap. Ah, oh, I see. Right? Bear does not run. It's a tactical decision, you would say. He does not run from death. <laughs> he simply laughs at it. 
Well, he's laughed at it eight times now, Venius. <laughs> uh, he's not doing the worst on his team. Helio is currently 1-8 and 0. Yep. Uh, not a great scoreline. We've seen a couple of top laners not do too well here, but Bear, he wants to go in again. Let's see what he can do. Suns up Seras. Warren's gone in. Can't get a full channel off. That's a double kill already for Team Fire. Tussle's now leaping all over the place. He gets a double. They're going to clean the house up here as Team Ice hit the deck. Team Fire, they get the ace. Admiration is all I have for Latin South America after that fantastic performance. LJL, yes, you played very well. You played smart, you played calculated, and my god, Seras, you outperformed once more. But you just can't take anything away from the LAS because that was such an entertaining game. It certainly was. I mean, LJL, they have a few tricks up their sleeve for IDBCA. This is probably one of them. Seros went off on that Diana. We've seen how well he can play, not only in 1v1s, but in the summer room. Summer